Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So imagine you go to your child's school wearing your favorite Keep Female Sports Female t-shirt or Make Women Sports Female Again t-shirt. And the next thing you know, you're told that you're not allowed to attend any more games or matches, that you're banned. Well, that's what happened to two dads. It wasn't the t-shirts or hoodies they were wearing, but it was wristbands with the dreaded XX chromosomes. Apparently the most offensive chromosomes out there at the moment. So you want to be a woman, you want to compete in women's sports, but unfortunately you were born with XY chromosomes. So the last thing you need are people reminding you of that, reminding you of the chromosomes you will never have, letting you know in no uncertain terms that being a female requires XX chromosomes. I mean, how dare such people remind you that you are actually male? So in New Hampshire, a school district banned two wonderful fathers who simply went to a sporting event to support their daughters, to cheer on their daughters and the other girls. Good fathers who were defending their girls' rights to participate in sports fairly to ensure that their daughters are safe. They were banned for wearing the XX wristbands during a match against a high school that has a transgender player. Apparently, the school took this to be an act of protest but the two dads said that they weren't protesting, they were just showing up to support their daughters. It's not unheard of for people to wear custom made t-shirts, certain colors, certain logos or names to support a particular team or a particular athlete or a particular school. And they showed up to support the girls. So this was a varsity soccer match where they showed up, just the two of them wearing the wristbands. So the Bow School District slapped Anthony Footy and Carl Fellers with no trespass orders, accusing them of leading protests against the transgender player on the Plymouth Regional High School team by wearing and distributing wristbands at the September 17 game. The protests was designed to and had the effect of intimidating, threatening, harassing and discouraging the student as well as other students from playing, said the September 19 letter to fellas from Superintendent Marcy Kelly, as shown on the NH Journal website. So this is the letter they received. The thing that these sporting bodies and these school districts need to understand is that this is their doing. When you allow males to participate in women's sports, this is what is going to happen. The people who are on the receiving end of this, they're going to say how they feel, and they have the right to do that. The people who support girls, who support women, they're going to say how they feel. They're going to express themselves. They have a right to reply. They have a right to criticize. And what they're doing is they're calling it bullying and harassment for the sole purpose of silencing people and punishing people who dare to speak up. You can't say that young girls have to play against boys and expect nobody to say anything about it and use the, uh, the people in question as shields and say that their identity means that you're not allowed to discuss it. You're not allowed to object even. That's not how it works. These wristbands simply said X, X, that's it. No names were mentioned. Nobody was called out. These are wristbands simply stating biological fact. Biological fact is now offensive, which means that people aren't allowed to speak the truth without repercussions. The Bow High School dads deny protesting saying they wore the pink XX wristbands as a show of support for female athletes. The XX symbol refers to female chromosomes. I was there to support the girls. I don't even know where they come up with the term protest. I wanted to show my support for girls as athletes and for their rights to compete. In my opinion, I honestly believe what they're doing will destroy girls' sports. And it's these sort of actions where people are banned, threatened, this is what's drawing more attention to the situation. So you say you care about the male athlete, but you're drawing more attention to it. They could have shown up, worn the wristbands, and that would have been the end of it. So one of the dads was confronted at the match and he politely obliged by taking the wristband off. But what happened is that other parents noticed what was going on and they said, no way. So they pulled out their wristbands and put them on and they refused to take them off. This is what caused the commotion is people coming up to these dads and kicking up a fuss over some wristbands. That's what caused all this drama. Of course, people are going to notice and people are going to respond. And that's what happened. It was so bad that the police got involved 
and the referees temporarily halted the game. So I'm sorry, it was the school officials who caused this. That is absolutely insane. The police were called over some wristbands. That's where we're at today. That's how fragile people are today. Meanwhile, women have to deal with people coming up to them and pouring tomato soup over them. Women have to deal with TRA, counter-protesters, literally stopping them from being heard, screaming and shouting over them to drown out what they're saying. But a parent can't wear a pink wristband. <laughs> the transgender player, 15-year-old Parker Terrell, has been able to compete in girls' soccer, even though New Hampshire Governor Chris Simooney signed a bill in July banning boys from competing in girls' galactic sports in grades 5 to 12. That's because the federal judge blocked the law last month with a temporary restraining order in response to a lawsuit filed by two transgender athletes, including Terrell. So what's happening is the federal government is infringing upon the will of the states. If the states decide to implement policies that protect women and girls, the federal government is interfering with that and overriding it, using the courts to do so. US District Judge Lanja McCarthy, an Obama appointee, said that playing on the boys' soccer team was not a realistic option for Parker and that excluding the player from the girls' team would cause immediate, substantial and irreparable harm. What about the immediate, substantial and irreparable harm caused to the girls? I guess that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! Those are the very reasons why we have categories in sports to begin with. Those are the very reasons why in soccer we have a boys' team and a girls' team, men's soccer and women's soccer. To say that it's unrealistic for someone to compete in a category that aligns with their biological sex is just completely false. How is that unrealistic? That's how sports work. That's how it has always been. Identity doesn't change that reality. And what you're doing is you're causing harm to the girls by allowing this. And they have a right to say that they object. They have a right to say no. This is why the governor signed the bill in the first place for the protection of women and girls. And apparently none of that matters because we don't want to hurt the feelings of a male athlete who wants to compete on the girls team. A person playing on a team that aligns with their biological sex is going to be less harmful and less dangerous than a boy playing on the girls team. That's just basic common sense. I have no idea if this person's on any medication, if they're actually going through all of that process, or they're just saying that they identify as a girl. Either way, they are still male. You've got two competing goals in sports, right? One is inclusion, which everybody can understand and get on board with. However, the second goal that's in direct opposition with inclusion in this instance is going to be a fair competition. And if you, if that's your priority, if your overriding priority is going to be fairness over inclusion, you got to turn to the data. And the data irrefutably shows that biological males are 10 to 30 percent stronger faster, have better endurance, better aerobic capacity across the board. Even if like this child who went through the puberty blockers and takes estrogen has been doing that since elementary school. Um, again, if we defer to the studies, and I sent several to your producers, which maybe they can put on the homepage, they show that even on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones, the decrease in physical performance is, quote, trivial. That's what the data says, and to give you an example, if you look at a biological male, transgender female, with grip strength in conjunction with a biological female, transgender male, okay, so both of them are on blockers and cross-sex hormones, the transgender female, the biological male's grip strength was 17% greater than the female on testosterone and puberty blockers. Yeah, and this when you talk about contact sports, you talk about safety, you talk about volleyball, you talk about yeah. soccer, I mean, this is, this is out of control. And saying you identify as a girl doesn't make you a girl. It doesn't make this person the same. The reasons why females play together is because they're the same. It's very simple. Biologically, they're the same. Even if there's variations in size and ability. This person is not the same biologically, whether on hormones or not. The now banned parents are also concerned about harm, namely to their daughters. I don't care what Parker wants to do with his life, Fuchi told the NH Journal. What I do care about is that my daughter could be physically hurt. Maybe not by Parker, because he's not the biggest kid on the field. 
but there's a chance that next time will be different. Absolutely. The policy alone allows boys to compete on the girls' team, to compete against girls. Today it's Parker, tomorrow it could be someone else, it could be a much bigger boy. And we know the other implications that come with this, the locker room situation, that is taking away a safe space for girls, which they're entitled to when they go to school, when they go out there to play soccer. They're entitled to get changed without males being present. The district's no trespass order against footy expired September 23, although fellas has been banned for the remainder of the full sports season. Wow. The situation may be ripe for a free speech lawsuit against the district. Both fathers have reportedly talked to lawyers. Absolutely. If you're going to be banned for wearing a wristband with XX on it, I don't see how that cannot be seen as a violation of the First Amendment. It's a direct infringement upon one's freedom of speech. The wristband wasn't offensive in and of itself, but because you don't want people objecting to your policy as a school district, you're punishing them. Now this person has been allowed to play because of the ruling, the injunction, but that doesn't mean that people aren't allowed to respond and give their reaction to that news. So Ilya Shapiro, Director of Constitutional Studies at the Manhattan Institute, pointed to Tinker versus Desmonet. The 1969 Supreme Court decision holding that a school district's ban on students wearing black armbands to protest the Vietnam War was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court said this was a First Amendment violation over 50 years ago in the context of black armbands. Vietnam, said Mr Shapiro on X. And New Hampshire has had multiple transgender players. Uh, Mayal Jacques. A junior at Kearsarge Regional High School in North Sutton is the reigning girls outdoor track state champion in the high jump, which is something very close to my heart. I used to be a high jumper. But this, this hits hard <laughs> because a girls championship title is held by a boy. There's no other way of looking at it. It's going to skew records and historical data and outright deceive people. The only sports where we're going to have records that are flawed, that are skewed, is girls' sports, is women's sports, because there are going to be plenty of records, plenty of championships over various years that are held by boys. It's absolutely unacceptable, and this should not be allowed. So there are two conflicting school of thoughts when it comes to this. We have the TRAs who say that a person should be allowed to compete according to their gender identity. Gender identity is all that matters, apparently. That's all they care about. If that's how you identify, then that's how you should be seen and treated. So if you're male, but you identify as a girl, you'll be allowed to play in the girls category and be treated like a girl. However, we have the common sense side who simply believe in safety and fairness. That biological fact matters and should take precedence over identity. And both sides have the right to say their point of view, to express how they feel. But what we're seeing is the common sense side being suppressed by tyrants, being told that they need to be silent. And the loudest voices we're hearing are the most insane voices. So they're not letting it phase them, the fathers. It says the apparently unrepentant footy continue to drum up enthusiasm for the girls' soccer team in a cheeky post Tuesday on Facebook. As we continue to support our Bow Lady Falcons, I ask that everyone go peacefully and patriotically to every game. It sounds like he's inciting more wristband protesting, however you interpret that tweet. In all seriousness, it seems that freedom of speech is yet another right that has been infringed upon due to the cult of gender ideology. But I think if the dads do seek legal action, they have a very good case. As that lawyer pointed out, it is unconstitutional to say that somebody can't protest peacefully with a wristband. These fathers weren't even protesting, according to them. They were simply supporting their girls. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.